Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the typewriter video series. This is Joe Van Cleve. And uh, some time ago, I presented you the Brother EP20 Thermal Electronic Typewriter. And I've been using this quite a bit. But just this last week, this is what came in the mail, the Canon Type Star 4. Yes, the Canon Type Star 4 is also a thermal electronic typewriter. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to not only review the Canon, but to do a little comparison between the Canon and the Brother EP20. So stay tuned. Well, both of these thermal electronic electronic typewriter brands have a lot in common. Uh, they're both intended to be used, I think originally intended to be used, with these ribbon cartridge cassettes. This is the smaller one for the brother, and this is the slightly larger one. This is an IR50 Model 2. I have four of these that came with this Canon. So it is a thermal film transfer kind of ribbon. It, it looks like a carbon film ribbon, a thin ribbon of plastic with a coating of some kind of black ink-like carbon-like material, but in the case of these thermal printing cartridges, it, there is a thermal printing head in the machine and it transfers via heat of uh, the ink material to standard paper. And my experience has been the uh, quality of the imprint really is affected by the kind of paper you're using. Some kinds of printer paper, kind of cheap copy paper, whatever, sometimes the letters don't quite transfer as well as other kinds of paper. Again, it's a heat transfer process. Some of that uh, quality difference might be because of the age of these cartridges. So these thermal cartridges are no longer being manufactured, although you can buy them on places like eBay, but the prices are fairly expensive and I wouldn't really rely upon these kind of cartridges to use these typewriters with going into the future. So you might ask yourself, well, what do you do then? How do you use the machine? Well, obviously because it's a thermal printing type of technology, you can use thermal paper, which is essentially like cash register paper, which this is slightly wider. This is, what is it, four and three eighths, I think. Uh, you can buy these rolls of thermal paper at uh, office supply stores or online. And you can also buy eight and a half inch wide thermal fax paper, which is really the way I would recommend using these machines if you want to write on standard width, like letter width sheets of paper. So they both are operated off of battery power or AC adapter a type of AC charger. So so both of these units did come with the charger units. My brother EP20 came with a brown leather carrying case and the AC adapter, a couple extra ribbon cartridges. The Type Star 4 Canon uh, didn't come with any kind of a case, but it did come with the uh, AC adapter charger and uh, five ribbons. And both machines came with an owner's uh, manual, operator's manual, which I think is pretty cool because there are some features that are kind of non-intuitive otherwise. Well, on the Brother EP20, when you want to feed the paper in through the platen roller, you have to use these power buttons to drive the roller mechanically. Like that. Whereas on the Canon Type Star, you feed the paper in manually with the platen knobs. And there's kind of a loud clicky sound, a ratcheting sound when you feed the paper in. So it's it, it's fed manually or mechanically in through the slot here. Uh, both of these machines have an LCD screen right here that can be used for, uh, in the case of the Brother, they call it the correction printing mode, the CP mode. And in the case of the Canon, they call it the line-by-line -line mode, where you do the editing on the screen here. Or there's also a character-by-character -character mode. A character mode is you press a key and it directly prints it, which is the same as the direct print or DP mode in the Brother. So both of these machines have a knob for adjusting the contrast of the LCD screen. The uh, Canons is here, and the Brothers is right here. They're very similar. They both, of course, have a power switch. The Brothers is here. The Canons is on the right side. And there is also an input for a six-volt AC adapter next to the power switch here. And the Brothers is in the back of the machine right here. So you can power these either from batteries or from AC adapter from the wall outlet. The uh, Canon has the ability to charge nickel cadmium batteries, uh, but it does say in the manual that you can also use uh, disposable dry cells. 
Now, so as far as using other kinds of rechargeable batteries that aren't nickel cadmium, I probably wouldn't use them like nickel metal hydride or whatever, I would use either alkaline batteries or nickel cadmium. So with the uh, Brother EP20, you can use alkaline batteries in the battery compartment, or you can plug in an AC adapter back here. And when you plug in the AC adapter, it's gonna disconnect the batteries. So there's no need to worry about the AC adapter trying to charge the non-rechargeable batteries in the EP20. It's safe. However, the Canon Type Star will use either an AC adapter alone, you can run it just from household power, or you have a Canon a nickel cadmium battery pack that they used to sell that goes in here as one unit, or separate nickel cadmium D cell batteries, either one of those, if you use it in conjunction with the AC adapter, it will keep those batteries charged while it's in the machine and while the adapter is plugged into the wall. Or you can use regular alkaline disposable batteries, but if you use alkaline disposable batteries, you do not want to plug the AC adapter in while they're installed because it will try charging those non-rechargeable batteries and it probably won't be good for the batteries or for the machine. So just remember that if you leave non-rechargeable batteries in here, don't plug in the AC adapter. So I'm gonna probably try to find a set of D-cell nickel cadmium batteries for this long-term use and see about keeping it charged that way. But for now, I'm using it strictly on DC batteries. It seems like the Canon is going to be quite a bit heavier of a machine. Well, let's go ahead and measure the weight of the machines and, and measure their dimensions and see. Okay, dimension-wise, the Brother with its lid on, so it has a snap-on lid, as you might recall from the review of this machine, it is 320 millimeters by 242 millimeters by 51 millimeters thick, whereas the Canon is 342 millimeters wide from knob to knob, 275 millimeters uh, deep and 58 millimeters uh, high. So it's only about seven millimeters uh, thicker, the Canon is, only about seven millimeters thicker than the Brother. And it's about uh, 20 millimeters wider this way and about maybe another uh, 30 millimeters deep this way. So not a whole lot of difference in size, just a little bit bigger in the case of the Canon. The uh, Brother is 2355 grams with the cover and the batteries, whereas the Canon is 2631, so about 300 grams more on the uh, Canon. So there are various modes that you can operate either of these machines in. First of all, the line spacing mode. On the Brother, it is a physical switch, one, one and a half, and two. Whereas on the Canon, it's actually a setting that you go into using the mode switch and uh, the left and right arrow keys, and you set these on the software settings on the screen. The margins are set with left and right margin buttons here, whereas the uh, Brothers has left and right margins here. There's a tab set and clear on here and as well as here. There's also an alternative character, like a second keyboard on the Brother that you uh, activate with this green second shift button, whereas the Type Star has a keyboard button. There's an alternate keyboard, which is really mostly the uh, number and symbol keys up here, and over here there's alternate symbols you can get to there. Okay, to change the various modes on the Canon Type Star, you're going to use the mode key here, your two left and right arrow keys, and your return key. And the way this works, you have this display here, and in the bottom of the display you have all these different modes. And starting from left to right, the line spacing, so one, one and a half, or two, and I was at one. To change these, like if I want to change it from one to one and a half, I can hit the return key. And it takes me to the next field, and this is where it toggles between character print mode and line print mode. Character print mode is basically like direct print mode on the Brother EP20, whereas line print mode is equivalent to the correction print mode on the EP20. So I hit return to set that. It takes me to the next field, and it is standard print mode. There's an underline print mode, and then there's a stretched print. It stretches the letters, and there's a stretched underline. And the next field is your paragraph mode, I guess you could call it. So there is a standard carriage return mode where you do the carriage returning. It warns you at the hot zone at the last six letters of the line. 
Then there is an automatic uh, carriage return mode, and then there is a justified automatic carriage return mode. And the next field is your A or B uh, fonts. So Courier 10 is what I was using. There's also this Cubic PS font mode. So once you get out of there, you have this setting set. Now I'd like to change this back to one line spacing instead of one and a half. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to the arrow over around here. I'm going to set it to one. Um, I like the line print mode and I like the, the characters the way they are. And then I really like to use the justified setting. So that's kind of the way you do it. If you want to go through in the middle of your typing and change these, you'll have to hit the mode key again, arrow to the one you want to change, change it to what you want, and then hit return and then exit out of the mode switch. I think one of the big differences, though, between these two machines, there's like three different three big differences, I would say. First of all, the quality of the keyboard. Uh, the uh, Brothers keys are very much like a calculator keys. They remind me a whole lot of, a, of an electronic pocket calculator, whereas the keys on the Canon Typestar are very much like a computer keyboard. So they remind me a lot of the uh, AlphaSmart Neo. This is a really nice keyboard for typing on. Definitely a better keyboard. I find on the Brother machine that Sometimes, even though I physically hit the key, I don't really make the key activate. I have to hit it hard, and it might be just the condition of this machine, especially the space bar. I find I have to hit it pretty hard, even though you can move it pretty easily like that. It doesn't always make a space, whereas the Canon is much more responsive. It's, it's really a computer keyboard. It really is nice. However, you have to get into these software menus to change all your settings, like the kinds of fonts. Whereas the Brother, it's more limited in the features it has, but the features it does has are more directly accessed via switches. So in that sense, it's more immediate control. And so besides the difference in the keyboard, the other real difference is actually the print quality. The print quality on the Canon is just so much better than the Brother. So here is a little print difference between the Canon Type Star on top and the Brother on the bottom. The Brother is definitely a dot matrix style font. There's only one size and style. Whereas the Type Star 4 offers two different fonts and several different heights and boldnesses and underline options. The other difference I'll show you in a minute is you can actually change the intensity of the imprint, how dark it is on the machine with a knob. But I'm also here using the uh, fully justified mode, so the font is completely justified. In that mode, you're typing, the uh, text is buffered into the LCD memory, and only when you've typed the entire line approximately does it start printing, and it figures out how much space is to pad into between between the words to make it justified, whereas the EP20 doesn't have a fully justified mode. And that may or may not make a difference to you, however, because if you think about these two machines are thermal typewriters. So the thermal paper, the fax paper or cash register paper medium is intrinsically not archival. You could put it in the freezer probably and these will last you maybe a decade, but if you leave it out in normal room temperature these will slowly fade. The thermal printing will fade out. So you have to think of it as a temporary writing medium. I kind of like to think of it as a paper memory system. It's like instead of storing the data digitally on some magnetic, let's say, or flash memory medium that might or might not be archival, it's really a paper storage system. Uh, that's the best way to think of it. So you're typing electronically digital typewriter, but to paper. All right, let's get some paper fed into the brother here. And I'm going to use this four and three eighths or whatever size. I never can quite remember the size of it here. Let's measure it just for the sake of being accurate. Four and three eighths. Four and three eighths is not standard with cash register paper. Three and one eighth is the standard cash register width, but uh, this right here is um, stuff I bought uh, on Amazon. Anyways, okay, so Brother EP20. Thermal typewriter. So you might hear the sound of it. The Brother machine is essentially entirely silent while you're typing. 
but it makes a clicking noise at the end of the line when you initiate the carriage return and then it makes another clicking noise when you finish the carriage return. So it, when you're in the process of writing with this machine, let's say out in public like in a cafe or restaurant, uh, coffee shop, uh, you're going to have this intermittent clicky sound. So you'd be quiet, you just hear the quiet sounds of the keys and then click and click every carriage return. So that is what it is. Turn it on, reset it, and this one, the cannon, you have to manually thread it up here. Okay, so I'm going to do several print tests on the Typestar 4. I'm going to first turn the control for the intensity, the darkness of the printing, which is here on the right side of the machine, right in front of the power switch. I'm going to turn it away from me, which is li as light as you can go. And I'm going to type a line of text in the direct print mode. And now I'm going to increase it all the way to the maximum. So you can definitely see that you can vary the intensity from light like this to really dark and obviously because the type star is capable of printing much darker than the can the brother EP20 I really like to use it in the darkest setting it really has a nice boldness to it like you can see for instance on this practice typing page right here I really like the boldness of the imprint and uh, it's very readable very acceptable in my view as electronic typewriters in the 1980s became more sophisticated, they ended up with a lot of features that had to be accessed only by means of what they called a code key. Now, the Brother EP20 doesn't really have special codes. It's a lot simpler than that, but the uh, Canon Typestar 4 does have a series of codes, and it's just complicated enough to where you might want to refer to the manual here, or make a little cheat sheet, like a little laminated card, if you're going to be using it a lot. But as far as the code features it has, and you use these in conjunction with the code key down here in the lower right corner, you can do decimal tabs on this machine. So you can set and execute decimal tabs. So kind of like one of the old typewriters that has decimal tabulators you can set that up you can s switch to a calculator mode on this machine uh, the brother EP20 has a dedicated calculator buttons over here that you have to access in the direct print mode there is several permanent characters, like a permanent space and a permanent hyphen that you use in this machine. If you're in the hot zone near the right side of the margin where it, it would normally do an automatic carriage return when you type either a space or a hyphen, by typing a permanent space or permanent hyphen you can keep it from doing the auto carriage return in that hot zone. And then you can also do a carriage return to that line feed and you can clear all the decimal tabs. So it's not really that difficult. There's not that many code features on here, just enough to make it a little bit more useful, but enough codes where you might have to refer to a cheat sheet to know what they all are. I think one of the handiest uh, special code feature though on the Type Star is used in conjunction with the code button here and this centering button up here. And that is it will center a line of text. And the way you do this is after you've done a carriage return and and the line is clear, there's no characters printed, uh, typed into the memory, you hit code and center and then you type whatever words you want to be centered, like a title for instance, and when you hit a carriage return it will print those out centered on the line. So here is a test tapping I did on 8.5 inch wide thermal fax paper. So this is the title that I made using the centered code feature, which is really easy to use. This first paragraph was typed using the standard paragraph mode where it just beeps at the end and then you have to hit a carriage return yourself. And this one right here was the justified mode. And the justified mode is really nice because you can keep typing as long as you don't overwhelm the memory. If uh, you can keep typing as it does the justification and the printing and the carriage return. I usually slow down a little bit when I am typing like that so it doesn't overwhelm the memory, but you can, uh, typing at a moderate speed, you can type and type and type. 
I believe one of my other test typings, this one right here, I type pretty much non-stop. So it is a nice handy way to uh, use the machine to get a nice appearance, fully justified text, and to just dump a lot of words down on paper, which is kind of what the, these both of these machines are really best used for. As I say, it's a paper medium. It's a digital typewriter that's recording on a paper medium, which is really kind of cool. So let's talk usability differences between these two. We've already mentioned that the Type Star is about maybe, I don't know, eight ounces heavier than the uh, Brother. I find personally when I'm sitting here using the Brother, it is a flat keyboard. It's not sloped very much. And I find because of this tinted plastic uh, cover, I like to flip it up to see what I'm typing. I guess if I'm in the direct not the direct print, but the correction printing mode using the LCD screen. I don't really have to worry about it as much, but somehow I just like to see it. I like to see my print position and see if it's printing okay. That's just me. So I do tend to operate it with the lid flipped up usually. Uh, this one, on the other hand, it has these two feet on the back, these two little levers you flip down like that and like that and that enables it to lift the back up a little bit more. You can see it elevates the keyboard a little bit more. I like that feature, and uh, I tend to not worry about opening up the uh, the lid when I'm using it. Actually, I can see through it a little bit better because the, the clear plastic window is thinner and there's less of the paper being obstructed by that window and somehow it's a little bit clearer this the angle of this is just such that there's more reflected light off of it and it's harder to see the the printing itself minor differences but i do find the usability factor there better and now let's talk about the usability of these typewriters in terms of coffee shop typewriters or restaurant cafe typing machines with the EP20 Brother, if you type regular letters uh, or spaces or whatever characters, all you're really going to hear initially is this, the chiclet sound, the sound of the little calculator-like keys, until you get to the end when you do a carriage return, and you do the you hear that click and click. Okay, so the typing itself is essentially dead quiet, really, but the carriage returns are always kind of noticeable. Now on the Canon, I have it currently set to the direct character print mode, and so as you're typing in the direct character print mode, it's going to be uh, printing a, a character every time you hit the keyboard, and it is noticeably loud, right? I mean, you do hear it every time, but when you do a carriage return, the carriage return is much quieter than the uh, Brother EP20. But instead, on the Canon, if I put it into the line print mode, so instead of printing every character as it goes, I, it's going to print it when I get near the end of the line. Then it's a lot quieter. So I think in the uh, line print mode, the Canon really ends up being overall quieter than the Brother EP20. And also, the line print mode is really the mode in which you're going to be able to do corrections in the LCD window. Uh, so you're essentially going to be looking at the LCD window as you're typing, just like you would in the correction print mode on the Brother. So different sounds. I think overall, the maximum loudness that the two machines make, it's louder with the Brother, that carriage return mode is just louder than any of the sounds that the uh, Canon makes. Well, I like to think of both of these machines as coffee shop machines, cafe machines, restaurant typing machines, the kind that you would go out into public, you know, at a Starbucks or whatever, let's say, or your local favorite coffee shop, and you're not going to have to worry about people being bothered by the sound of a manual typewriter. Uh, these really make not much more sound than a laptop computer. Essentially, the keyboard sounds are the same as a laptop computer, but the printing mechanism makes some noise also. Now, as far as practicality, well, let's get the bag. Uh, the Brother EP20 comes with its zippered pouch that carries the typewriter with the lid attached. So let's attach the lid. That's essentially how the Brother is. And 
It has enough room in this secondary pouch where you can put a roll of thermal fax paper in there. And you can carry the whole thing on a shoulder strap, right? So it becomes very handy. Now, I don't have the hard carrying case for the Canon, but it is quite a bit bigger. The overall package is much bigger than the Brother. But I can make the Brother actually even smaller than what it would look like carrying it in the bag. And that is, instead of taking the whole roll of thermal paper, I can cut sheets of these, individual sheets out with scissors or a razor knife, and I can put those sheets, just lay them in here on the typewriter, maybe in a little manila folder uh, to protect them. And I can carry a number of sheets, you know, half a dozen or a dozen sheets of paper. And then there's a carrying handle built on the bottom of the typewriter. So really, as far as having batteries in the machine, having some paper already in the lid of the machine, this is about all you need for the Brother EP20. And even though the performance of the Brother is not quite uh, as high of a performing machine as the Canon Type Star, it definitely is more portable, I think. It is lighter, it is smaller, and it has an integrated carrying uh, handle and a little lid. Okay, so the Canon doesn't have its own uh, carrying handle, and you're either going to have to carry it like this or find some kind of a bag. And I'm using this little Targus laptop bag, and there's room for the Canon and for its AC adapter if I want to carry that both. And of course, I don't have room in here though for the entire roll of thermal paper, however, so I'm still going to have to probably cut individual sheets of this off and put them in a little folder and put the folder in the accessory pouch here on the carrying bag. But either one of these are portable, certainly. The Canon has a better keyboard, a more usable keyboard, and the quality of printing is much better. Uh, but the Brother is lighter and smaller and more portable yet, and so it's hard for me to recommend one over the other. I think price-wise, you'll find these two in the used uh, market on eBay, for instance. You'll probably find these are very equivalent in price. Uh, of course, prices do vary by seller and condition and whatnot. But the Brother is still an, a good machine to use, even though it has more of a limited feature set and the quality of imprint is more just the dot matrix style printing. Considering the fact that the thermal printed text is not a permanent medium. It will last you a few years. I haven't tested it, obviously. I haven't had, haven't had these machines long enough, but they'll last you if you keep them in a dark climate. Uh, I've never really tried putting them in the freezer. I don't know how if they'll extend their lifetime, but I know receipts that I've uh, gotten from buying books, and I use the receipts as a bookmark. And so you go on the bookshelf, you find a book that's been around for 20 years, and the receipt is 20 years old. It's thermal paper. It's very faint, but it's still readable. So it kind of reminds me somewhat of non-archival media, like magnetic media. The paper reminds me of that. It has that same continuous degradation that you would expect of a non-permanent medium like that. So in that sense, both of these typewriters are going to produce a quality of print using thermal paper that is really designed for temporary kinds of writings, like I would say rough draft, first draft kinds of writings where you're going to be taking this and then doing something with it. The something you're doing with it could be scanning or photographing it and now it's in digital form and you can put it on your blog or other social media like Facebook or wherever. Um, these machines, I think the utility that they have is in their portability, carry anywhere to be able to write and create a temporary paper document that you can use later on for something more permanent. But they are really good writing tools. They're a lot of fun, and I really like seeing the results on paper rather than on a big screen. I just like that. I like the paper aspect of these. And uh, yeah, you know, the Type Star, it really does put out some pretty nice quality in the printing, and uh, it's hard to argue with that. As an electronic typewriter, it's really hard to argue with the quality of the Canon Type Star overall. But the Brother EP20 is just a cute little device that really is more portable and lighter. Well, this is Joe with a little shootout, a comparison between the Canon Type Star 4 and the Brother EP20. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, drop them down below. And hey, until next time, as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.